we are going to analyze the graph of quadratic functions looking at three different types of quadratic functions vertex form, intercept form, and standard form. In all three of these forms I will show you how to find the vertex, find its domain, find its range, and find its zeros. Let's take a look at vertex form. Because this is called vertex form, the first thing it gives us is the vertex. So the vertex here is h, which here is 5, comma k, which is negative 8. So our vertex is at 5, comma, negative 8. Now, without graphing it, let's figure out what this means about our parabola. Because a here is 2, that means that our parabola is a little bit skinny and it's facing upward like that, which means that this vertex right here at 5 comma negative 8, that's a minimum. That's the minimum value of this parabola, which means that the smallest that my y values can ever be, remember y is up and down, the smallest that y can ever be is negative 8, because this is negative 8 right here, and it goes all the way up to infinity. Now x can be anything. So already we have, just by looking at the vertex and thinking about our a, we have figured out three of the things that we wanted to find. The vertex is 5 comma negative 8. The domain is all reals because x is not being bounded here. x can be anything. And the range is that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 8. The reason is because negative 8 is my minimum and y can be anything above that. And we know that because our parabola is facing up from this 2 as a. Now the next part of this is to find the zeros of this parabola. And the zeros of a function are where the function is equal to 0. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our function f of x, which is equal to 2 times x minus 5 squared minus 8 and we're going to set this equal to 0 because that's how you find the zeros. You set your function equal to 0. We'll add 8 so we have 2 times x minus 5 squared is equal to 8. Divide both sides by 2 so we have x minus 5 quantity squared is equal to 4 we can solve this pretty easily by taking the square root of both sides. And of course, we have to remember to put a plus or minus in front of the square root on the right-hand side. So we have x minus 5 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4, which is just 2. So x equals 5 plus or minus 2. This means that the zeros of this function are at x equal 5 minus 2 gives us 3, and 5 plus 2 gives us 7. So, we have now looked at all four parts of this function. And if we were to graph this function, according to Wolfram Alpha, it looks like this, where our uh, vertex is at 5, comma, negative 8, which is down here. Here's 5 comma negative 8. And you can see that y is everything above negative 8, including negative 8. And x goes off to the right to infinity and off to the left to negative infinity. Furthermore, we can see that the zeros, those are the x-intercepts. We have one at x equals 3, and we have one at x equals 7. And that is the full analysis of this parabola. Now let's take a look at intercept form. Why is this called intercept form, you might ask? Well, pretty simple actually, because it's written out so that you can solve the x-intercepts, which are the zeros, really easily. Remember that the zeros are the values of x when you set your function equal to zero. Well, already just by looking at this, I know what they are. My zeros are x equals 3, because that would make this factor 0, or 7, because that would make that factor 0. Boom, already got the zeros. 
Now to find the vertex. The vertex is not that tricky to find if you know the zeros. Check this out. Here's three. One, two, three. Here's seven. Four, five, six, seven over here. So here's seven. Here's three. Because we know that our parabola is symmetric, that means that our vertex lies somewhere in between three and seven. Not just somewhere in between, exactly halfway in between. And the way that you can find that, at least the x value of your vertex, so our h, which is the x value of the vertex, it's just the average of my zeros. It lies directly in between three and seven. Of course, by looking at it like this, you can figure it out. Two to the right of three is the same thing as two to the left of seven. That's x equals five. However, if you didn't know that, then you could just take the average of three and seven, three plus seven over two, that's five. Now that we have the x value of the vertex, we can find the y value of the vertex by plugging h back into f. So the y value of the vertex is equal to f of five. You plug five into f, five minus three is, is two, times two is four, five minus seven is negative two, and four times negative two gives us negative eight. So our vertex is at five comma negative eight. Yes, this is the same graph as the one that we just did, just written in a slightly different form. The zeros are three comma seven, the vertex is five comma negative eight. Knowing the vertex, we can figure out the domain and the range. The domain is all reals. X can be all reals, mainly because X can be anything. There's no restriction on what X can be. However, there is a restriction on our range Y. And as we saw before, two, which is my A value here, is positive, which means that my parabola is gonna go up like that, meaning that we have a min at x equals five, and this value here on the y-axis is negative eight, which means that y can be anything from negative eight on up, so y has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. And this is the analysis of a function in written in intercept form.